morning, good evening to you, viewers. Um, this is the uh, Church of Nazarene Baba District Family Forum. And, uh, well, it has been a pleasure coming to you here on CBC TV 8 over the past year. And we are now into our second year, actually. And um, as we focus on various topics, related to the family. Of course, as you, as you often say, our, our thesis or our vision is to help improve from your life in Barbados. And we believe that if we focus on some key issues um, impacting the family, and of course, not just again in fair problems, but possible solutions. Uh, and of course, these sessions themselves are discussion starters as well. We're hoping that we will help to improve the status of the family in Barbados and of course we, we appreciate um, your feedback as we share in these sessions. Uh, today again I have with me my co-host Reverend Kelman. A very blessed good evening to everyone and I trust that you are having a good day thus far. We have a, a pretty good uh, topic this evening for you you know in terms of uh, managing the issue of drugs in the family, and I'm sure that uh, there are many persons who have been touched by this courage, and I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to uh, shed some light and uh, create some opportunities for persons to uh, experience healing uh, from this very significant issue. Yes, sir. And of course, um, to share with us this, this, this evening is a specialist in that area, um, Makeda Bourne, Substance Abuse, Prevention Officer. Makeda, so glad to have you. Thank you so much for inviting the National mm -hmm. Council of Substance Abuse. We are happy to be here. All right. And of course, um, this is a sensitive topic, and we thought it's best to have someone who, um, have, who has a close um, relationship with the topic and management of families who are experiencing difficulties um, to come and share with us. So we are so glad that you have come to share with us today. Mm -hmm. um, Makeda, Mrs. Bourne, um, as I said, is a substance abuse prevention officer. And of course, she has designed and implemented many programs for the adolescent and family over the past 12 years um, through National Council of Substance Abuse, of which she is an integral part. Um, she coordinates programs for f children suspended from school, for example, special needs children, um, hearing impaired youth and adults, and uh, a specific program, Prevention First Family, um, to name a few. Of course, she's passionate about working with families, especially um, specialized in this area of helping persons who have been abused, who have abused drugs, I should say, um, how they can overcome, um, the families can deal with this problem. So um, in a few minutes, we'll be back with you. Um, I, per perhaps I'll say a prayer first, and then we'll come back with you, and you'll hear from Mrs. Bourne. And she shares with you, and then um, Kim and I will have a chat with her later. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this occasion where we can share with our listening public on this important topic of substance abuse and how family, how it impacts families, um, specifically in Barbados, for example. And we pray that as we will share this evening that you will just guide us. May this be of help to some person who is watching or some persons who, who are watching to help to improve their family life. We give you thanks for your leadership this evening, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Amen. So viewers, call a friend, call but maybe someone you know or a family you know who, are ha who is having issues with substance abuse um, or your, your teenager or somebody, church friend, church member, because the information is very relevant, of course. Even if your family is not impacted, the information is critical for church leaders, for example,
because we are, we believe we have to work together to fight um, this curse of substance abuse of drugs. So, um, we'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, welcome back and we are delighted and really looking forward um, to hearing what um, Mrs. Moore will share with us um, today. We have a very special relationship with uh, NCSA, uh, just for now, been at Bank Hall, mm -hmm. and um, one, of, one of your um, former employees who's now deceased, Ishmael Morris, was a crucial part mm -hmm. of, our, of our church. He, he did, did a program, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there are people too, mm -hmm. you know, so you have a very close connection. So, um, Mrs. Ward, over to you. Well, thank you so much, Reverend Kelman and Reverend Party. I am so happy to be here as we look at this topic of substance abuse and the impact it has on the family right here in Barbados. We know that across the region, a number of persons will be having commonalities, but we want to zoom in to you, the viewers, uh, to someone you may know, to discuss this whole concept of substance abuse. First of all, we want persons to know that substance abuse is something that happens all across Barbados, in every family, despite what the religion background might be, despite what the social class might be, despite what the ethnic background might be, there's evidence that drugs are being used across the board in some form or in some fashion. So we're not here to point any fingers at any particular group. We know from research that the drugs of choice in Barbados, number one that uh, presents for treatment is marijuana. We also have alcohol, cocaine, we're seeing more cocaine in the form of the powder and in the rock form. And then we are also seeing tobacco. Now tobacco is one of those drugs that I'm very concerned about because although a lot of persons may not engage with what they'll call the normal cigarettes. There's a new trend that is happening in Barbados known as vaping. Mm -hmm. And because persons think that they are using a vape or they are steaming juice that it is safe, we are having more and more of our young people being introduced to nicotine and to marijuana through vaping. So those are some of the drugs right up front. So if you missed it, we have marijuana, we have alcohol, tobacco, and we have crack cocaine that tops the list in terms of drugs being abused in Barbados. But those are not limited to those, but those are the top ones according to our research. I want us to recognize that you, the family, play a very important role as it relates to stabilizing the entire society. So where drugs are introduced within the family, we will have a case based on theory, reverence we will know, that ecological theory tells us that a person does not live like on an island by themselves. They have to interact with their environment. They have to interact with systems. So because of that, one will affect the other. So we do not believe in the blame game that it is your fault as parents or your fault as teachers. What we try to do is to empower different systems or different relationships to the adolescent to help them to either prevent or delay the start of using any type of drugs. So where does the family come in? You are the primary introduction to a child and to the child into the environment. So it is important that you as a family start to make decisions on what is your values as it relates to your drug use in the home or at all. So are you okay with your young person using alcohol? Do you think that your young person must use an alcoholic beverage to be defined as a man or a woman? 
do you think that they must be in a place that they must use tobacco or marijuana or any other drug to be in a place to be friend as a man or a woman these are very important things to know every drug has they have side effects so i know a lot of persons are a bit confused and i just want to touch a little i said that marijuana recreation marijuana is still illegal in barbados i know persons are confused a lot of a lot of young persons are confused thinking that it is free it is legal we can use how much we want we can plant how much we want and that is not the case what the law has done it has made provision for medical marijuana and that grade and how that is grown is completely different to recreational marijuana i also want to mention that the government has made some strides we have the 2017 health act that protects persons under 80 from the use of tobacco protects them from being used to advertise or even to sell tobacco we also have recently our 2021 legislation as it relates to license of alcohol or alcohol licensing and we are really excited about that because this app was listen this app was so old and we finally have an app that protects the minors as it relates to alcohol so parents we want you to know our family members and viewers we want you to know that no longer is it legal for you to send someone under 18 to the shop to purchase an alcoholic beverage? No longer is it legal for vendors to sell young people alcohol. In addition to that, the act covers the fact that young people should not be even working and packaging alcoholic beverages. So the law is very heavy in terms of penalties as well. And it is important that viewers know the different things that the government is doing to protect the young person and you, the family member, as well. So, my last point I want to put in as I, I wrap up this part. I want to throw it out there that a lot of persons think or they have a mindset of the church. And they believe that the church is the most holiest than thou place, which no problems happen. Pastors have no issues, leaders have no issues, they are living in the clothes where everything is perfect. I want to say that is not true. That is far from the truth. The difference with the church is that they have God on their side to help them through their challenges. And as they aim to live holy, you know, they have God and Holy Spirit to strengthen them. But guess what? They have the same challenges, including substance use by some leaders as well as we have challenges where there might be ministers who children are members of the church who children or family members are using a drug where the challenge comes is where leaders believe because of their being up front it may be a little more challenging for them to come forward for help for themselves or for a family member because how they are seen in society. We want to make way for persons in the church. No, listen, we are not here to pull down anyone. We are here to help you through the challenges of life. So whether a person is addicted to alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, cocaine, and listen to this pastors and those listening, even to some over the counter medication, Whatever the issue is, you have to come forward for help. I also want to encourage some pastors who are not trained counselors to find additional help. I love what Reverend Farley opened and said. They, they love to find the person who is trained and who has the information that can help guide them and guide you, the audience, as it relates to this whole issue with substance abuse and the whole issue of getting treatment for substance abuse because I know Reverend Kelman especially, he's, he's uh, specializing in treatment in this area, will let you know not every and everyone could just jump in and say that they are doing some form of counseling as it relates to the dynamics 
that come with substance use and substance abuse. Thank you for that initial um, presentation, Ms. Mm -hmm. um, Bourne. Um, quite um, informative, I must say. Well, we come back with you in a moment as we share. Uh, viewers, back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Well, welcome back to you and uh, thank you, Mrs. Borden, for that very informative presentation. Now, you, you mentioned a little bit about marijuana, and uh, in my, my daily activity, activity, sorry, I, I recognize that marijuana has been uh, a very significant challenge um, to us. Would you want to comment a little bit? Because it, it seems as though there's some persons that think it is okay um, to talk about the harmful uh, potential of marijuana. Okay, thank you so much for that question. As it relates to marijuana, the drug found in marijuana is something known as Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, or some people know it as THC. That is the drug that when someone chooses to put the cannabis or marijuana, as they will call it, into their body, that is what goes to the brain and says to the brain, listen, I want more. Mm. It goes to the brain and it says, Okay, you know what? I want you to feel relaxed. It goes to the brain and it does a number of things. Unlike most other drugs, marijuana or the cannabis plant is not as stable. So you can have a plant that is grown one place and it carries a certain strength. Mm -hmm. It grown another place, it has another strength. And mm -hmm. that is why we have thousands of variation around the world especially now that it is legal in some countries, persons are experimenting and you're having all these different names and fashions and types, and they have different strengths. Mm -hmm. On the other drugs as well, when a person chooses to use marijuana, that person will respond differently. Mm -hmm. So if four persons in a room use the same exact quantity of marijuana at the same time, same environment, the potential of them behaving the same is very low. So you may have a person who may sit back and relax, feel like nothing happened to them. You may have another person who start to sing, they're hearing music. Another person may feel like stripping off their clothes. Mm -hmm. Another person may feel they can fly and mm -hmm. jump through a window. Mm -hmm. You know, the variation is broad mm -hmm. and it comes with the difference between the disposition or how the person was before. If they had a mental issue, mm -hmm. if that person had stress before, mm -hmm. it caught the environment and the whole thing will be different. No. In terms of similarities, if a person small immediately they will feel what is called a high feeling. What is happening is that you have nerves that do not touch. Our nerves is sending like electricity to communicate. And you have that drug, the THC, going in between there and it's blocking the communication. That's the easiest way I can explain it. Hence giving this, you know, this wild feeling. So what feels good is actually something negative happening in the brain and body. Mm -hmm. Right away, if you choose to smoke, you know, like anything, nicotine or marijuana, that, cigarettes that you smoke, that is the lungs that will be darkened. You will have red eyes. Mm -hmm. You will have munchies, meaning you just want to eat, 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 mm -hmm. eat all the time. You know, so those are just a little snippet of some of the effects if a person chooses mm -hmm. to use marijuana. Mm -hmm. How about when there is a combination of marijuana and have a drug. Yeah. Oh, oh. We, we do have dual and poly use of drugs right. and this is something that um, any treatment, um, substance use treatment provider will say to you it is something that is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Not only does it cause that effect of addiction, meaning now the person has come to the place where they cannot function unless they have the drug, you also have now where you have persons who may have a number of effects happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
And if you have because to, of the combination. Oh man, mm -hmm. and there are drugs that speeds up your system that say go fast, go fast. And you have drugs who say go slow. Yeah. So mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. we have young people who were mixing drinks, energy drinks, along with alcoholic beverage. Mm -hmm. Alcohol tells the system to go slow. Mm -hmm. Energy drink tells the go, system go, go to fast. go fast. Mm -hmm. And they were getting what they were calling the seesaw effect. Mm -hmm. So they thought this was something good until we recognized a lot of our young people were just blocking out. Mm -hmm. Why? Because imagine I come to you and I say to you, paint this wall, go fast, go slow. Why are you going so slow? Go faster, go slower. You will get confused and frustrated. And that is the same thing that is happening when persons are mixing drugs mm -hmm. inside of their body. And, and more often than not, if not treated, that person may die under the influence. They may, they may eve. That's the worst case scenario. Whoa. You might find some of them block out. We have some videos circulating where young people think it is fun to take young people who are vomiting, you know, because the body is rejecting or trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And, and they're block out in the streets or in the gutter. And you can hear persons laughing because they do not understand. You see, as fun. Serious. Yeah. 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 Because they suppose they think about the energy, drink, energy drinks are not harmful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I suppose they're not in themselves. Combination. Mm -hmm. But the combination of the energy drinks yeah. and alcohol yeah. can cause serious problems. Yeah. As much damage as the marijuana can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I want to just follow, follow up for your question, though, mm -hmm. to, to ask this question in terms of gateway drugs. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, um, and do, do you see a graduation of, of persons from one drug to the other? Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. For, for years, history always showed that once a person is introduced to a drug, especially if they use the drug as a means of coping, mm -hmm. they will always want something greater to help them every time they feel in that stressful position. Mm -hmm. Certain drugs like cocaine, it gives a person a high that cannot even be described with words as some people will say. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the drugs that we know once you use it once, you are hooked. Mm -hmm. Cocaine, heroin, those things. Mm -hmm. And the person wants to use it over and over. To, and to over carry the high, higher. They're trying, they're trying to get a high, but they cannot get the same high. They cannot things. get the same yeah. high. Mm -hmm. So they're going to graduate to stronger drugs, to right. more drugs, to polyuse, trying to get that. Mm -hmm. You might even have persons who are introduced at a very young age. And our research is showing, Reverend, that. Even in the home, family members are the primary ones who introduces Whoa. young people to drugs, Whoa. starting with alcohol. Mm -hmm. You know, because we see it as a social drink, not mm -hmm. recognizing the ethanol in the alcohol affects the brain development, the cognitive development, the physical growth of that young person. Mm -hmm. And we introduce them, hold a little sip of that particular beer, mm -hmm. hold a little sip of this particular drink, or if you want to get each other to sleep, there's this thing in Barbies that they give them particular alcoholic beverages mm -hmm. to get each other to see because they're stressed out. For, oh, 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 the worms. <laughs> of, of the worms. Oh my, you <laughs> definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unaware of the damage. Yeah. It's causing to that child, mm -hmm. yes. And not only that, as Reverend Kemmer said, to lead them to want to use other drugs mm -hmm. uh, because the body goes through something known as tolerance. Mm -hmm. So eventually that young person that three, four years old, you introduce them to alcohol, by the time they're 11, 12 year olds, they can drink something that's highly, a high content alcoholic beverage mm -hmm. and, and don't feel any way. But still the same damage is happening in their brains and bodies. Yeah, in, 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 um, in Barbados, in terms of what, what the stats are showing, how early are children induced to some of these drugs? Oh, we have children, um, based on our primary school re um, survey that we recently did, we have children saying as young as seven years old mm -hmm. that they're being introduced to some form of a drug, whether it's alcohol, whether it is marijuana, whether it's tobacco, they are being introduced as young as seven mm -hmm. years old. So you think the case where parents are unaware of the seriousness of a damage? They, okay, they have a party, Okay, the children are given, um, well, give, given this at, at parties or just given regularly. But my point is, you think that we need some more parent education? Of course. The Bible says that we perish because of a lack of knowledge. Yeah. And that is true right across the board. And mm -hmm. a lot of persons will function with someone based 
on the information they have mm -hmm. and their own belief. Not mm -hmm. necessarily that the belief or value system may be accurate, but that is how they may function. Or mm -hmm. some persons, we learn mostly by the method of authority. So I saw my parents do it, so I do it too. <laughs> so their parents gave them something, so they give their children something, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So we have too much of that happening. And we also have where boundaries are being crossed where there are families that they do not introduce their children to alcohol, they do not believe in um, different types of drugs, but then this child becomes friends with another friend, um, child yes. whose family it's has different. that belief it's and different. somehow that family has more influence and than the other family and, and that child is being introduced or was introduced mm -hmm. to a drug as well. Yeah. So it is important for families to get the information as it relates to drugs mm -hmm. and the, the truth because there's a lot of myth out there, the yeah. truth about the impact that drug use can have on the body. And I want to slip this in here, Rev, if I can, to when we relate to direct use, secondhand smoke, if you are smoking and they breathe out, that body breathing that cloud. You have side stream in the, the smoke coming out of that cigarette. And then we have something that um, we want the public to understand on a third hand smoke, mm -hmm. meaning if a person chooses to smoke within a room, the chemicals and the compounds are captured in the materials mm -hmm. of that room. Yes. And then a child coming in that room, mm -hmm. an adult coming in that room, mm -hmm. an elderly person coming in that room, they are breathing in these different yeah. unhealthy chemicals. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why this person may take sick, mm -hmm. or they may have different signs, or over years develop cancer, mm -hmm. other diseases. Especially if it's done over a prolonged period. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So the, we want to get the education out there that mm -hmm. persons will know, you know, this is the effects that research is showing us. Mm -hmm. I want to ask though, I mean, I know there may not be any research um, locally as yet, but based on your anecdotal evidence, would you say there's been a, any change in the use of substances during this coronavirus with all the lockdowns? Oh. And um, locally, I, as I sit here, I, I cannot think of research that I can put on, as you said. Mm -hmm. But when we did, when I did some reading internationally, when um, there were first the lockdowns, mm -hmm. first there was a skyrocket in terms of alcohol oh, yes. use mm -hmm. as one of those coping mechanisms because initially, as we say, persons don't really see alcohol as a drug. Mm -hmm. So even if you are anti-drug use, you see it just as a social drink. You yes. will tend to, mm -hmm. Some person will tend to gravitate in that area. Mm -hmm. But yes, persons definitely for um, coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. as part of the coping mechanism, mm -hmm. there was some drug use, especially when people mm -hmm. were in, in lockdown, mm -hmm. had those yeah. different okay. reports mm -hmm. internationally, globally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. thank you for that. Um, it's almost, time is almost up. Wow. But we can, we can tap into some of the same areas in, as we, in, the next, in the next program. Yes. So I want to thank you so much. I'm Ms. Boring for sharing with us. Never of truth. We trust in that persons will act wisely. Mm -hmm. Even as they we, we they hear the facts that you have shared. Yes, um, we want to invite you to join us in the next program. Rob McCallum will say a closing prayer for us. Almighty oh, God, we give you thanks today for the gift of information. And we pray even now that as we have shared today that you would indeed uh, use it, Lord, uh, to help persons, Lord, to come to the reality of what they're doing to themselves, Lord. And and I pray, God, that healing will occur. We thank Lord, Mrs. Bourne, for how well she has shared. May you bless her. And may this program be a source of encouragement and even the beginnings of transformation for someone who may be caught in the grip of drugs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing with us. We will continue the second part of this presentation next, in the next program next Sunday. All right, join us then. God bless you.